So we're doing all of these thousands, millions of experiments every day in labs around the world in estrogen. So today is the CMA Country Music Award, so I figure any excuse to wear my cowboy hat is a good excuse. I have a picture here I took this afternoon, and it's of my cell culture media. You can see that it's red. I've got some plastic dishes in the background here where I grow my cells. And I also am highlighting that this is plastic number one. It's polyethylene terra phthalate. So we're growing our cells in plastics. We have our liquid that we're growing our cells in in a bunch of phthalates, acts like estrogen. And today I'm also gonna talk about that red food coloring, which is in all of our cell culture dishes. It's red. Was that an issue? Let's talk about it. I've got here are structures, chemical structures. Again, chemistry, you don't need to know chemistry, but I wanna show you just a visual here uh, of estrogen, estradiol, the structure. You can see these benzene rings. Here's genistein from soy, the soy estrogen we talked about a lot. Again, it looks a lot like estrogen. It's got those same benzene ring structures. But get this, red number three, similar. Red number 40, also similar. A lot of these ring structures, phenol red, similar. So these red food colorings look a lot like estrogen. The chemistry looks like estrogen. Do they act like estrogen? Well, I've got a paper here from 1959 that says no, red number three does not act like estrogen. It's called screening of some food colors for estrogenic activity, 1959. They tested 10 or more. They used immature female rats and essentially injected these dyes into the rats. And all they did to measure whether these dyes acted like estrogen was cut out the uterus and then measured the uterine weight. That's literally what they did. And they said, no, there was no difference in the uterine weight. So red number three is not estrogenic. Okay, and by the way, a lot of scientists consider that the gold standard of testing for estrogen. I personally don't. I would rather see the estrogen receptor. Test the estrogen receptor. Is it binding directly? Test the receptor. We can do that. 1997, that's what they do. The Environmental Health Perspectives Journal got a paper here called Estrogenic and DNA Damaging Activity of Red Number 3 in Human Breast Cancer Cells. So they say exposure to pesticides, dyes, and pollutants that mimic the growth-promoting effects of estrogen may cause breast cancer. Uh, they said red number three was found to increase the growth of HTB133 cells. It's just a type of cell. But not estrogen receptor negative human breast cells, HTB125. So they, they promote the growth of normal breast cancer cells, but not when they take the breast cancer, uh, when they take the estrogen receptor out. Right? So in other words, they say increased binding, red number three, increased binding of the estrogen receptor to the estrogen response element. What does that mean? It means estrogen, red number three, these red food colorings are acting like estrogen, at least in breast cancer cells. That's better evidence than measuring uterine weight, in my opinion. And let me just talk about one more study and then give you the, give you the real problem here. What's the real bigger issue? Obviously, you can avoid red food coloring, and you should, and that's pretty easy to do. But let me show you this paper, 2016. This paper is called Estrogen and Phenol Red Free Media for Osteoblast Culture, Study of the Mineralization Ability. Osteoblast. We talked about bones last time. We talked about joints. We talked about ozone. I'm studying that at the Mayo Clinic, obviously. Osteoblast, phenol-free media. Why would they design phenol-free? That's that red color in that media, in the stuff that we scientists are growing our cells in. It says to design an estrogen and phenol-free media for cell culture and check its effectiveness. That's the purpose of this study. And safety on osteoblast growth is necessary to maintain the estrogen receptor free for tests. They want to keep that estrogen receptor free and available. They don't want to be sticking red food coloring to it. They say literature reports that phenol red acts as a weak estrogen. They say different cell lineages are controversial, different cell types, in other words, different experiments, different cells. But they say when there's breast cancer cells involved, that's act like estrogen, and primary cells. In other words, if you take them out of the breast directly. And here, okay, so here's the punchline. Here's what's really the big problem. Scientists are growing all of their experiments, all of these cells in dishes, in plastic, first of all, and in red food dye, 
phenol red, which acts as a pH indicator, so it turns yellow when the cells are using up too much of the nutrients. That's why they do it. But it's in there. It's estrogenic. So we're doing all of these thousands, millions of experiments every day in labs around the world in estrogen, in red food coloring, and in plastic, of course. So what happens? Cells that can't handle the estrogen, they die off. And we just keep doing the experiments, keep publishing papers. But essentially, we're, we're kind of eliminating cells, normal cells, that should be responding to estrogen in an unhealthy way. But we've eliminated those. We've wiped those out. We keep selecting cells that can handle these high estrogen loads. And so that kind of, like I say, it, it influences, it biases, it screws up all of our scientific experiments in cell cultures around the world. We can talk about it in terms of joints, osteoblasts, like they're looking at in this paper, or any other topic, any topic. This applies to everything. It's a huge problem. Obviously, for you personally, avoid artificial estrogen, red food coloring, but be careful with scientific studies because when it comes to estrogen, it's in the cell growth media, it's all over the place, and it's, it's altering all of the scientific data. You like that, buddy? Little visitor today. Oh, buddy. Little spectator.